In this tutorial, we will learn how to create an atomic structure like this, using very simple and easy to follow steps. Most importantly, during the formation of this nucleus part, we will learn some useful techniques, how to create instances, or how to randomize their orientations. And you can apply that knowledge in various other places as well. So, let us get started, with a blank new file. Delete this default cube. Go to the Add menu, and add one UV sphere. This will form the basic particles for our model, like electron or proton. First, resize it by 0.2. Then go to the Modifiers tab and add one Subdivision Surface Modifier. Change the levels to two. Then go to the Object menu and select the Shade Smooth option. We will now add some color or material for this. Let us turn on the Render View mode. Then go to the Materials tab and create a new material. Change the base color to something like this blue. We need to add few more particles, so let us move it aside, maybe here. While it is still selected, press Shift-D on your keyboard to make a duplicate copy and place it here. These are our protons, let us now create an electron. Press Shift-D again to create a third copy. This is an electron, but it shares the same material as that of our proton. We will make the electron green. So, create a copy of this blue material. Then change its base color to some green color. While it is selected, press Shift-D to create another copy of this. So, our basic particles, electron and protons are ready. We will now start the formation of our nucleus. So go to the Add menu, and add one icosphere. Open this little operator box. We have to ensure that the subdivision level is set as 2. We will now enable the instancing option. In the Object Properties tab, expand this section called Instancing. Switch over to the Face tab. Once this option is turned on, and let's say we attach another object to this, through a parent-child relationship, Blender will automatically create one instance of that child object, for each of the faces, on this object. So, we will make this proton particle, as a child of this icosphere, so that we get many instances of our proton surrounding this sphere. First select the child, or the proton, then press the Shift key and select this sphere, so that both of them are selected. Then press Ctrl-P to bring this menu and select the option called Object Without Inverse. So you can see, many instances of the proton are created over this sphere. But this looks very symmetrical and little artificial, we want to distort them slightly, so that they are not very uniform. So select only the icosphere, and go to the Edit Mode. First, turn on the Face Selection Mode. Then go to the Mesh Menu. Under Transform, select this option called, Randomize. Now, open this operator box. Change this amount field, to 0 0.05. Then change the uniform value to 0.5. And, normal to also 0.5. We can close this. Let us now go back to the object mode. As you can see, we got a non-uniform distribution of the protons, exactly as we wanted. But we need some neutrons as well among these protons, so we need to change the color of some of them to another color, say red color. But we won't do that manually, there is a very nice trick for this. Let us split the screen into half. Then, open the shader editor in the left side panel. We can close this section. In order to modify anything for the protons, we need to select the original sphere from which these instances are created. It has been made a child of this icosphere. So expand this tree, and you can see the original sphere as a child. This sphere has been instantiated in many numbers around this icosphere. And for its material, we just have a principal BSDF of blue color. Let us move them to two sides to have some room here. Now, select this principal BSDF and press Shift D to duplicate it. This will be our neutron, so change its color to something else, maybe red. In order to add these two BSDF nodes, we need to add one, Mix Shader. So, go to the Add menu, and add the Mix Shader. Place it in between these two, and connect the two BSDF nodes, to these two input sockets. The two colors mixed with each other to give a violet color, but what we need is, some of them should be pure red, and some in pure blue color. For that, we have to tactfully control this FAC parameter. So, go to the Add menu, and from the input group, 
add one object info node. Then again go to the add menu, and from the converter group, add one math node. Let us place them together, side by side. Now, change this math node function from add, to greater than. Then, connect this random output of the object info node to the value input of our math node. Let the threshold be 0.5. So the system will pick up some instances at random, and compare the same with this threshold, that runs from 0 to 1. Some will fall below 0.5, and some above 0.5. We will now connect its output, to the FAC input. As a result, you can see that some objects are showing in red, and some are in blue color, at random. This is exactly what we wanted. We can close the shader editor, as its purpose is now over. Okay, so we got the nucleus somewhat ready but there are some gaps here, at the vertex positions. We will rectify that, but before that, we can hide this icosphere. So in the object properties, under instancing, we have two options, for viewport and render. If you uncheck them, the source object, won't be visible anymore. But we need to fill these gaps, so we will create one more similar set. Let us first hide this icosphere, which will hide the current set of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Then go to the Add menu, and add another icosphere. And this time, in the instancing, instead of the face, please select the vertices. Now we need the second copy of the proton that we had created. We will make its instances, around this second icosphere. But before that, we would like to randomize the vertex normals like the last time. First, select this option, Align to Vertex Normal. Then go to the Edit mode, and turn on the Vertex Selection option. Then under the Mesh menu, under Transform, select the Randomize option. Open this operator box like before, and change the amount value, to 0.05. The other fields are just fine, let us go back to the Object mode. Now select this proton, press the Shift key and select this sphere together, then press Ctrl P to bring this menu, and select the option, Object without Inverse. So we got these instances as expected. Let us turn off the visibility options from here, so that the icosphere itself is not visible. Let us now unhide the previous collection of protons and neutron, so we get the two sets together over here, so the nucleus is finally ready for us. Now, we would also like to rotate this nucleus, just around its center. For that, we have to simply rotate the icosphere, and these object instances will rotate along with it. Ensure that this icosphere is selected, and we are at the first frame of our animation. Under the object properties, right-click on these rotation values, and insert a keyframe. Then go to the end of the animation. Change these three rotation values, to 360 degrees. Then right-click and insert another keyframe. Similarly, select the second icosphere, go to the start of the animation, and insert a keyframe for these initial values. Then go to the end of the animation, change all these three rotation values, to 360 degrees, and don't forget to insert a keyframe. If you now go to frame 1, and play the animation, you will see that the nucleus has started spinning around its center, very slowly. So, our nucleus part is done. In the next step, we will add two orbits, and these electrons will move in those orbits continuously. This is actually easy. Let us first hide these icospheres, for the time being. Then go to the Add menu, and under Curve, add a Bezier circle. Enlarge it by a factor of 4. We want to tilt this curve little bit, so change the X rotation value to, 45 degrees. Then go to the Object menu, and under Apply, select All Transformations. Now, we will select any one of these, maybe this one, to move along this path, or the curve. So, go to this Object Constraint tab, and add one, Follow Path Constraint. In this target field, select the Bezier circle that we have added. But, here you can see, that the electron actually moved away from the curve. There is an offset between the two. That is because, the electron's original location is not zero as we can see here. We need to clear these values. So, make all these three values as zero. As soon as we clear that location, the electron is back on this curve. Now, go back to the Object Constraint tab, and enable the option called Follow Path, here. Then also click on this Animate Path button. 
Now if you start the animation from the beginning, you will see the electron revolving around the nucleus following this curve. And in case you want to change the direction of its movement, first select this curve object, and go to the edit mode. From the segment menu, select switch direction. That's all. Now, if you play the animation again, the electron will move in the opposite direction. But it is moving at a slow speed. In order to make it move faster, select the Bezier circle and go to this curve tab. Scroll down to the path animation section and expand it. Change this number of frames to a lower number, let us enter 15 here. If you now play the animation once more, the electron will move very fast along its circular orbit. We will now make another copy of this curve so that the second electron can revolve around the nucleus in a separate orbit. So press Shift D on your keyboard and enter. The copy is placed at the same position of this curve. Let us go to the object properties. You can see here that the second Bezier circle is selected right now. In order to have a different orientation for this copy, let us enter 180 degrees of rotation around the Z dimension. And the curve is repositioned like this. We now have two different orbits for the two electrons. And like before, from the object menu, you can apply all transformations for this. This step is optional, but important. Because it allows you to make any other modification or duplication of this curve later, without any issues. We will now place this electron on this curve. So select it, and in the Object Constraint tab, add one, follow path constraint. In the target field, select this second Bezier circle. The other important thing is, we have to clear its location transformations as well. So change these three location offsets to zero. The electron is back on the curve. So in the Object Constraint tab, select the Follow Path option and click on Animate Path button. We are finally done with this. If you now run the animation, you will see both the electrons running very fast. And, we can now bring back our icospheres, that is, our nucleus. So together, they will look cool. You can use this model for a quick demonstration of atomic structure. You can control the speed of the rotation by changing the frame number of the curves, or you can also add multiple electrons on each curve. But in your render output, these curves won't be visible. To display them in render, you will need to convert them into mesh object from the object menu. Under this option, convert to, you can select mesh. Then add a suitable material, use a glow effect, or anything that makes your model more beautiful. That's all for today. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.